live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in New York City, it's theCUBE's coverage of Big Data NYC. This is our event we've been doing for five years in conjunction with Strata Hadoop, now called Strata Data, right around the corner in a separate place. Every year we get the best voices in tech, thought leaders, CEOs, executives, entrepreneurs, anyone who's bringing the signal, we share that with you. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE. Eight years covering Big Data since 2010, the original Hadoop world. I'm here with Amit Wally, who's the Executive Vice President, Chief Product Officer for Informatica. Welcome back, good to see you. Good to be here, John. Yeah, CUBE alumni, always great to have you on. Love product, we had Arun on from Hortonworks. I just saw that. Product guys are great, can share the roadmap um, and kind of kind of connect the dots. As Chief Product Officer, you have to have a 20 mile stare into the future. You got to know what the landscape is today, where it's going to be tomorrow. Um, so I got to ask you, what's, where's it going to be tomorrow? <laughs> it seems that the rubbers hit the road, real value has to be produced. The hype of AI is out there, which I love by the way, people <laughs> can see through that, but they get it's good. Where's the value today? That's what customers want to know. I got hybrid cloud on the table. I got a lot of security concerns. Governance is a huge problem. The European regulations are coming over the top. I don't have time to do IOT and these other things, or do I? I mean, this is a lot of challenges. How do you see it playing out? I think, uh, to be candid, it's the best of times. <laughs> uh, the changing times are the best of times because people can experiment. I think, uh, I would say if you step back and take a look, we've been talking for such a long time. If there was any time where, forget the technology jargon of infrastructure, cloud, IOT, data has become the currency for every enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. uh, everybody wants data. I say like, you know, business users want today's data yesterday to make a decision tomorrow. IT has always been in the business of data. Everybody wants more data. But the point you were making is that while that has become more relevant to an enterprise, it brings into the lot of other things. GDPR, it brings governance, it brings security issues. I'm in hybrid cloud, some data on-prem, some data on cloud, but in essence, what I think every company's realized that they will live and die by how well do they predict the future with the data they have around yeah. their customers, products, whatever yeah. it is, and that's the new normal. We hate to say it, admit, pat myself on the back, but we in the Cube team and Wikibon saw this early. You guys did too, and I want to bring up uh, a comment that we've talked about a couple of years ago. One, you guys were in the data business, Informatica. You guys went private, but that was an early indicator of the mm -hmm. trend that everyone's going private now. Yeah. And, and that's a signal. For the first time, private equity finances have, have trumped uh, bigger venture capital asset class financing, yep. which is a signal that the waves are coming. Yep. This is what, we're, we're surfing these little waves right now. We think they're big, but the big ones are coming. The indicator is everyone's retrenching. Yep. Private equity is a sign of undervaluation. They want to actually also transform maybe some of the product and engineering side of it or go to market. Basically, get the new surfboard. Yeah, no, for the exactly. Big waves. Right. I mean, that was the premise for us too, because we saw, as, as we were chatting, right, we knew the new world, which was going towards predictive analytics or AI. See, data is the richest thing for AI to be applied to. But the thing is that it requires some heavy lifting. In fact, that was our thesis that we, as we went private, look, we can double down on things like cloud, invest truly for the next four years which being in public market sometimes is hard. So we step back and look where we are as you were at Informatica World today. Our, our big, big belief is look, there's so much data, so many varying architectures, so many different places. People are in Azure, <laughs> AWS, on-prem. By the way, still on mainframe. That hasn't gone away if you <laughs> go back to the large, uh, large customers. But ultimately when you talk about the biggest, I would say, the new normal, which is AI, which clearly has been over talked about. Yeah. But in my opinion, has been barely touched because the biggest, application of machine learning is on data. Yeah. And that predicts things, whether you want to predict forecasting or you predict something will come down or you can yeah. predict. And, and that's what we believe is where the world is going to go. And that's what we double down on with our Claire technology. Yeah. Just go deep, uh, yeah. bring AI yeah. to data across the enterprise. We've got to give you guys props. You guys are right on the, right on the line. I got to say, as product person myself, um, I see you guys on executing a great strategy. You've been very complimentary to your team. I think you're doing a great job. Let's get back to AI, because sure. I, think, I think if you look at the hype cycles of things, um, IOT certainly I still think is a lot more hype to have there, there's so much more to do there. Cloud was overhyped, remember cloud washing, exit back in 2010, 11, oh that's just cloud washing. Well that's a sign that ended up becoming what, it, what everyone was kind of hyping up, it did turn out. AI thinks the same thing. And I think it's real because you can almost connect the dots and be there, but the mm -hmm. reality is is that it's just getting started. And, and so we had Rob Thomas from IBM on, on the Cube, and you know, we were talking, and he made a comment, I want to get your reaction to, he said, you can't have AI without IA. 
information architecture. And you're in the information informatica business, you guys have been laying out an architecture, um, specifically around governance, you mm -hmm. guys kind of saw that early too. You can't just do AI, AI needs to be trained, there's data modeling, there's a lot of data involved that feeds AI, who trains the machines that are doing the learning. Yep. So, you know, all these things come into play back to data. So what is the preferred uh, information architecture, IA, that can power AI, artificial intelligence? I think it's a great question. I think what typically we recommend and we see large companies do, look, in the current complex architectures that companies are in, hybrid on hybrid cloud, mm -hmm. multi-cloud, old architecture, by the way, mainframe, client server, big data, you pick your favorite, arch everything exists for any enterprise, right? People are not, companies are not going to move magically everything to one place to start putting data in one place and start running some kind of uh, AI on it. Our belief is that that will get organized around metadata. Metadata is data about data, right? Y the organizing principle for any enterprise has to be around metadata. Leave your data wherever it is, organize your metadata, which is a much lighter footprint. And then that layer becomes the true central nervous system for your new next-gen information architecture. That's the layer on which you apply machine learning to. So a great example is, look, take GDPR. I mean, GDPR is, the, if I am a distributed company, large companies have to adhere to GDPR. I mean, who's touching my data? Where is my data coming from? Which database has sensitive data? All of these things are such complex problems. Mm -hmm. You will not move everything magically to one place. You will apply a metadata approach to it. And then machine learning starts telling you, gee, I see some anomaly detection. You see, I'm seeing some data which does not have access to leave the geographical boundaries of, let's say, Germany, going to, let's say, UK. Those are kind of things that become a lot easier to solve once you go organize yourself at the metadata layer, and that's the layer on which you apply AI. To me, that's the simplest way to describe as the organizing principle, what I call the data architecture or the information architecture for the next 10 years. And that metadata, you guys saw that earlier, but how does that relate to these new things coming in? Because you know, one would argue that um, the ideal preferred infrastructure would be one that says, hey, no matter what next GDPR thing will happen, there'll be another Equifax that's going to happen, there'll be some sort of state-sponsored cyber attack uh, to the U.S., all these things are happening. I mean, hell, all securities attacks are going up. I mean, like, security is a great example of that. We saw it four years ago, uh, you know, and we worked on a metadata-driven approach to security. Look, I've been in the security business, I was at Symantec myself. Security is a classic example where it was all at the infrastructure layer, network, database, server, but the problem is that it doesn't matter, your, where is your database? In the cloud, where is your network? I mean, do you run a data center anymore, right? If I may, figuratively, you don't. Ultimately, it's all about the data, the way at which we are growing, and we want more users like you and me access to data. So security has to be applied at the data layer. So in that context, I just talked about the whole metadata-driven approach. Once you have the context of your data, you can apply governance to your data, you can apply security to your data, and as you keep adding new architectures, you do not have to create a parallel architecture, you have to just append your metadata. So security, governance, hybrid cloud, all of those things become a lot easier for you versus creating one new architecture after another, which yeah. you can never well, get Well, people to. will be afraid of malware and these, these malicious attacks, so auditing becomes now a big thing. If you look at the Equifax, in my take on I have some data on that show that there was other action, they were fleeced out for weeks and months before the even hack was even noticed. It always happens. I mean, they were 10 times fished over, even before it was discovered, but there was, they were inside. So audit trail would be interesting. Uh, absolutely, I'll give you, typically if you read any external report, this is not nothing tied to Equifax, it takes any enterprise three months minimum to figure out they're under attack. And now, if a sophisticated attacker always goes to right away when they enter your enterprise, they are finding the weakest link. You're as secure as your weakest link in, in, in security. <laughs> yeah. And they will go to some data trail that was left behind by some business user who moved on to the next, next big thing, but data was still flowing through that pipe. Or by the way, the biggest issue is insider attack, right? You will have somebody hack your or my credentials, and they don't download like Snowden a big fat document one day. They'll go drip by drip by drip by drip every day. You won't even yeah. know that. That again, is an anomaly detection. Well, it's going to get down to the firmware levels. I mean, look at the sophisticated hacks in China. They run their own DNS. They have certificates. They hack the iPhones. They make the phones and stuff. So uh, you got to assume hacking. But now the, it's knowing what's going on. And this is really the dynamic nature. So we're on the same page here. I'd love to do a security feature coming to the studio in our office, Palo Alto. I think that's worthy. I just had a great cyber uh, chat with, uh, with uh, Vitter, CTO Vitter. Yeah. 
uh, June 8th, is awesome, doing some work with the government. But this brings up the question around big data. The landscape that we're in is fast and furious mm -hmm. right now. You have big data being impacted by cloud, because you have now unlimited compute, Absolutely. low latency storage, unlimited power source in, in that engine. Then you get the security paradigm. You could argue that that's going to slow things down, maybe a little bit, but it also is going to change the face of big data. What, what is your reaction to the impact of security and cloud to big data? Because that, even though AI is the big talk of the show, what's really happening here at Strata Data is, it's no longer a data show, it's a clouded security show, in my I opinion. I mean, cloud to me is everywhere. Big, it, it was the, when Hadoop started, it was on-prem, but it, it's pretty much in the cloud, and look at AWS and Azure, everybody runs natively there and they support it, so you're exactly right. To me, what has happened is that, you're right, companies look at things two ways. If I'm experimenting, then I can look at it in a, in a way where I'm, I'm not, I'm in dev mode. But you're right, as things are getting more operational and production, then you have to worry about security and governance. So I don't think it's a matter of slowing down, it's a, ma it's a nature of the business where you can be fast and experiment on one side. Yeah. But as you go prod, as you go real yeah. operational, you have to worry about controls, compliance, and governance. By the way, in that case, and by the way, you got to know what's going on. You got to know the flows. For a data lake is a data lake, but you got the Niagara Falls streaming every, content. Every customer of ours who's gone production, they always want to understand full governance and lineage in the data flow. Because when I go talk to a regulator or I go talk to my CEO, you may have hundred people going at the data lake. I want to know who has access to it. If it's a production data lake, what are they doing? Yeah. And by the way, what data? Uh, what data is going in? The other one is. I mean, walk around here, how much has changed? The world of big data, yeah. or the wild, wild west. Look at the amount of consolidation that has happened. Yeah. I mean, you see around the big distributions, right? Yeah. To me, it's going to continue to happen, because it's a nature of any new industry. I mean, yeah. you looked at security, cyber security, big data, AI, you know, massive investment happens. And then as customers want to truly go to scale, they say, look, I can only bet on a few that can not only scale, but at the governance and compliance of what a large company wants. And the waves are coming, there's no doubt about it. Okay, so let me get your reaction uh, to end the segment. What's Informatica doing right now? I mean, obviously I know a lot because we cover you guys on, with the show and also we keep in touch. But I want you to, to, to spend a minute to talk about why you guys are better than what's out there on, on the floor. You have a different approach. Why are customers working with you? And if the folks aren't working with you yet, why should they work with Informatica? I mean, our approach is very, uh, our approach in a way has changed, but not changed. We believe, we, we operate in what we call the enterprise cloud data management. Our thing is, look, we embrace open source. Open source Spark, Spark Streaming, Kafka, you know, Hive, MapReduce, we support them all. To us, that's not where customers are spending their time. They're spending their time, once I got all that stuff, what can I do with it? If I'm truly building next-gen predictive analytics platform, <laughs> I need some level of uh, uh, able to manage batch and streaming together. I don't want, I want to make sure that it can scale. I want to make sure it has security, it has governance, it has compliance. So customers work with us to make sure that they can run a hybrid architecture. Mm -hmm. Whether it is cloud on-prem, whether it is traditional or big data or IoT, yeah. all in one place. It is scalable, and it is has governance and compliance baked into it. And then they also look for somebody that can provide true things like not only data integration, quality, yeah. uh, cataloging, uh, all of those things. So when we, we're working with large or small customers, whether you are in dev or prod, but ultimately helping you what I call take you from an experiment stage to a large scale operational stage, you know, without batting an eyelid. That, that's the business we are in. And in that case- So you're in the business of operationalizing data for customers who want it at scale. My, our belief is we want to help our customers succeed. And mm -hmm. customers will only succeed not just by experimenting, by taking that experiment to production. <laughs> so we have to think of the entire life cycle of a customer. We cannot stop and say, great for experiments, yeah. sorry, don't go operational with so us. So we had a theme, we've had a theme here in theCUBE this week called, you know, I'm calling it, don't be a tool. And around, too many tools are out there right now. This, and we call it the tool shed uh, phenomenon. The tool shed phenomenon is customers aren't, they're tired of having too many tools. And they bought a hammer a couple of years ago that wants to try to be a lawnmower now. And so you got to understand the nature of having great tooling, which you need, which defines the work. But don't confuse a tool <laughs> with a platform. And this is a huge issue because a lot of these companies that are falling by the wayside are groping they're for platforms. So they are customers tell us the same thing, which is why we... But you, tools you, have to work in context. That's exactly right. So that's why you, you heard we talked about that for the last couple of years, the intelligent data platform. People, customers don't buy a platform, but all of our products, like in other microservices on yeah. a platform. Customers want to build the next-gen data management platform, which is the intelligent data platform. 
a lot of little things are features or tools along the way. But if I am a large bank, if I am a large airline, and I want to go at scale operational, I can't stitch 100 tools and expect to run my IT shop from there. I yeah. can't, I yeah. will never be able to or do it. Or if, I mean, there's good tools out there that have a nice business model, lifestyle business or cash flow business, or even tools that are just highly focused and that's all they do, and that's great. It's the guys who try to become something that they're not. It's hard, it's just too difficult. I think you have to, I mean. The I, tool shed phenomenon is real. I mean, you have to, I, mean, I <laughs> think companies have to realize whether they are a feature. Yeah. I always say, are you a feature or are you a product? Yeah. You have to realize the difference between the two and in between sits a tool. <laughs> well that quote came, the tool comment came from one of our chief data officers that was, uh, kind of sparked the conversation, but people buy a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and you don't want to mow your lawn with a hammer, get a lawn mower, right? Do the right <laughs> tool for the job, but you have to have a platform. The data has to have yeah. a holistic view. That's exactly right. The intelligent right. data platform, that's what we call it. What's new with Informatica? What's going on? Give us a quick update. We'll end the segment with a quick, with quick uh, update on Informatica. What do you got going on? What events are coming well, we up? Just, uh, we just kind of came off a very big release. We call it 10.2, uh, which had a lot of big data, hybrid cloud, AI, and catalog, and security and governance. All five of them, big release, just came out. Uh, and basically customers are uh, adopting it, uh, which obviously was all centered around the themes we talked at Informatica World. Again, single platform, cloud, hybrid, big data, streaming, and governance and compliance. And then right now, we are basically in the middle, after Informatica, we go on this barrage of tours across multiple cities across the globe, so customers can meet us there, whether it's Paris is coming up, I was in London a few weeks ago, and then separately we're getting up for coming up, uh, we'll probably see you there at Amazon reInvent. I mean, we are obviously yeah. an all-in partner for- Do you have anything in China? China is- Alibaba. An area, we, we're working with them, I'll leave it there. We'll be in Alibaba in two weeks for Excellent. their cloud event. Excellent. So the Cube well, is breaking into China. That's great. Cube China, we need some translators, so if anyone out there yeah. wants to help us with our China blog. Yeah. Uh, we'll be at reInvent, you know. we'll be at Dreamforce. We were obviously, so you'll see us there, we were at Amazon uh, Ignite, obviously very close yeah. to all Reinvent will be great. Yeah, we will be there, and Amazon obviously is a great partner, and by the way, a great customer of ours. <laughs> well, congratulations, uh, you guys are doing great. Informatica, uh, great to see the success. We'll see you at reInvent, and uh, keep, uh, keep in touch. I mean, while he's Executive Vice President, EVP, Chief Product Officer at Informatica. They get the platform game, they get the data game, check them out. It's theCUBE, ending day two coverage. We've got a big event tonight. We're going to be streaming live our research that we're going to be rolling out here at Big Data NYC, our event that we're running in conjunction with Strata Data. They run their event, we run our event. Thanks for watching and stay tuned, stay with us at five o'clock, live Wikibon coverage of their new research and then Party at Seven, which will not be filmed. That's when we'll have some cocktails. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching, stay tuned.